Ready or Rando Not is not a typical reality show. Nothing is staged or even reenacted. No locations were scouted. All coordinates were derived on camera using a quantum random number generator through the Randonautica app. Raw footage available for skeptics. Randonaut at your own risk and with common sense. The world is a big majestic place. Wide open spaces, sprawling cities, and unbelievable nature is ours to discover. But how much have you really explored? What if there was more wonder to wandering? What if the mind, your mind, and your thoughts had an impact on the environment around you. The Randonauts are a group of curious explorers around the world who think this might be the case. They test this theory with the help of a quantum random number generator and Mother Nature. The results of the Randonaut journeys can only be called a phenomenon at this point. Today, three people from Orlando, Florida will break out of their normal routines to visit truly random places and examine the mysteries of the universe. My name is Deepak. I'm Alexis. I'm Auburn. And, and I'm, I'm ready, ready to random not. Get ready for a real world adventure that's as bizarre and fun as it sounds. Oh, what is that? Feels like I'm in a different dimension. <laughs> Ready or Randonaut? So here's how this works. Our three Randonauts will use the Randonautica app to access a QRNG, or Quantum Random Number Generator, which, you guessed it, generates a truly random number in the form of coordinates. The app can limit the radius of the quantum point so that we're able to explore the world directly around us without driving all day. And to make things even more interesting, randonauting isn't just about exploring the world around us. It's also produced some pretty interesting synchronicities or coincidences. And some experts are theorizing the quantum process may even be influenced by the user's thoughts and consciousness. This is why we ask our randonauts to set an intention for their journey before using the app. These intentions can be big or small, grand or trivial. Either way, we want to see what happens. So keep your eyes open and let's get started with our first randonaut. My name is Deepak Iyer and I'm a data analyst. I expect there to be a lot of evidence and an excess of data, really. Um, so off anecdotes and, and small occurrences aren't going to generally convince me of anything. I think people mistake coincidence for a set of patterns a lot. The intention for my first round not trip is aviation because I'm pursuing a pilot's license. All right, so aviation is the intention. Let's open up the Randonautica app and get our first quantum point. How good do you think the intention is? I think it's great. Okay. It's really great, especially because yeah. it's like, so it's weaved into your life right now. Right. And at 0.2 miles, you're gonna take a left on South Ranger. All better be next to me. I don't want. I don't want to get shot by anyone. I'm just saying. Better be what? I, I, I want you guys next to me at all times. Okay. <laughs> so you've definitely never been on the street. Before, no, right? no, I've never been okay. here. Yeah. Are we like on it? We're. It. I think. Yeah. It's the high school baseball field. Is exactly the point. Yeah. So I'm at the baseball field. Am I looking for something? So this is the first spot and we're pulling up in the car and you can see very clearly that it's a high school baseball field with high school kids practicing. I don't know if I can see anything more from inside. Doesn't look like Deepak sees much at the point. Um, but it does jog a memory. It's been a long time since I saw like this stuff going on. Actually kind of uh, being there reminded me of a story from middle school when I had tried out. There were there were about 30 kids trying out, and it was just me and another Indian kid, right? Um, and literally every other kid made the team except us two. So it was a little bit, you know, at, at the time I didn't really perceive it as anything. 
um, they had offered me like, oh, we'd love for you to be like a manager, like a baseball team manager type of person because we heard you're really good with math or something like that. Um, so at the time, I didn't think anything of it, but my sister was very adamant. She was like, you're not doing anything like that. I'm not gonna let you do that. And I was like, okay, fine. I don't know why you're so emotional about it, but fine. But looking back on it, I'm like, okay, was that maybe an indication of something? That was the only thing that, that memory that brought up. Yep. Seven three seven. Should we get started on our next point? Yeah. All right. Well, Deepak doesn't seem too impressed. Let's check out our next randonaut. I'm Alexis Grimkowski. Uh, I live here in Orlando. Uh, I work for a, a healthcare system. I love to do new things that I haven't done before. Um, random adventure, I mean, that's how I went to the Ukraine by myself. That's how I ended up flying a plane. That's how I ended up jumping out of one. <laughs> There's a huge world out there, and I know I won't see all of it, but the more I can see of it, the better. The intention for my randonaut journey is love because it's the only thing that I'm missing. And a dog. <laughs> I'd like to find a dog. <laughs> I've never been like over here ever. Alexis's first quantum point takes her to an unfamiliar part of town where she's focused on the intention she set. Yeah, I try to set it every day, but this time I mean it. Maybe I've just been looking in the wrong places this whole time like dating apps, things like that. It's the same thing over and over. People say that they want a relationship, but they don't, and, and that's fine. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I'm kind of the, to the point where it's like, I'm great, and if nobody wants to take the time to get to know me, that's okay too. You know, it's their loss, not mine. I'm always happy, you know, every time somebody finds their person. And so I kind of just think mine is gonna be really great, because I have waited, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, I have a thing, like, your destination is on the right. Okay. This creek? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, well, so the first place we are at is a little bit disgusting. I don't really know what to think about this. It's kind of like a garbage creek, <laughs> which actually, no, this makes total sense because this is like, I don't want to say it and insult anybody, but this is kind of like what my dating pool experience has been like. <laughs> A lot of people just aren't very nice or uh, it's just been kind of tough. So yeah. Alexis, this... um, the point is on the other side of the water. So maybe you can think about that too. It is. Yeah. The point actually is on the other side of the creek. And so when we get to it, there's a lot of forest, very dense, but the creek is too wide to actually go across. I don't want to get my feet wet. Uh, and maybe it's about like wading through the kind of the not so great parts to get to the other ones. Um, I mean, I could name those if I really needed to. I'm not going to, that's mean. The point that it took me to specifically was the one with the most amount of trash right over there. Um, uh, the point actually though is beyond the trash into all of that uh, place I definitely don't want to go right now, but then hopefully there's something good for me on the other side. Interesting place for my first point, but I think I, I did take something away from it. The good news is even though it's crappy and gross, I still see fish in there. While Alexis is pondering the meaning of Trash Creek, let's get started with our third randonaut, who's actually one of the show's producers. I'm Auburn Salcido. I'm a producer on Ready or Randonaut, and I have been on over 100 randonaut trips. I enjoy randonauting because I get stuck in my day to day. I'm a mom, I work, and I think randonauting helps break me out of my probability tunnel. What's a probability tunnel? Uh, oh, a probability tunnel is basically what you're expected to do. Your whole life you do so many things like, and it's predetermined essentially, so. Randonauting helps you to escape 
what you are most likely to be doing. The intention for my random knot journey is purple because it is my favorite color. So we're gonna random knot and we're off like a herd of turtles because turtles are slow. Turtle herd. Well, we're gonna get turtles now because we're talking about it. We should probably just focus on purple. Purple, purple turtles. Purple turtles! Donatello? Oh, they use the purple oh. ninja turtle. Okay. Things that make me feel purple. What makes you feel purple in general? Um, mostly like lack of oxygen. <laughs> I've just seen this. I feel like I should get a bear from here because I've seen this thing so many times. Taco Bell. Oh, there's a purple! Look at that purple tiger! That is a very purple tiger. Take the next right onto Carvale Drive. On her way to the quantum point, something purple catches Auburn's eye. Oh, there's a purple hammock. But that wasn't all. Oh my gosh, and the white rabbit! The white rabbit is crazy! Like, there's so many people that see white, white rabbits, and it's part of like the mimetics of it. The randonauts uh, have this thing about white rabbits and kind of like following the white rabbit, Alice in Wonderland type thing. And sure enough, at this house, there is a white rabbit, like huge white rabbit in the front yard. And we're all just kind of like freaking out. Like, I can't believe that we just found that. I was not aware of the rabbit thing. Oh yeah, the white rabbit. Oh my gosh, you're wearing a white <laughs> rabbit on your shirt! <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Okay, white rabbits. We have white rabbits, we have purple. What's funny is, Alexis's was love. And oh, and today we found love. love. That's something that people don't understand about random knotting yet is that it's not just about finding like one particular thing. The entire experience is kind of like this breathing thing that's like happening every step along the way. So one thing that's said at the beginning of the trip can turn out later on and you're like, oh my gosh, that just happened. Uh-huh, everything is connected. Just gotta create a little bit of disorder to figure it out. So how much more okay, we so we have like a block and a half. Okay. Leave the car. Head north on Carvale Drive toward Floridian Drive. This Look at this gate is right? opening. All of a sudden, the gate like weirdly opens. Not that that, that matters, but. And it felt like I need to look in there, so I did. Hello? Definitely just hit my head on the gate. That's but then the gate hit me in the head, so I kind of felt like maybe I wasn't supposed to be looking in there. You've arrived. Okay. So it says I have arrived. So I'm here. And observationally, I don't see anything that's necessarily purple. But I think my interpretation would be that we were meant to pass that white rabbit and that purple hammock and the love signs. All right, so we're learning to be on the lookout everywhere on your journey, not just the point. Deepak is on his way to his second point. Let's see if he'll find anything that will open his eyes. And take a left on Diamond Drive. Point is straight ahead. I'm not sure what that is. It looks like an open field. You see where that trailer is? Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly where I'm supposed to go. According to. Wanna do it? Sure. Okay. All right. Where are we going? There's a drain, and then beyond that, where that trailer is, is exactly where the point's supposed to be. It just looks like a storage field with trailers and I had to squeeze through the chain link fence in order to get to the spot that the app told me to go to. Can you guys hear me? All right. I didn't feel any real fear or hesitation to go through the fence, because mostly because it was desolate and, and there's no one around. I don't know if there's anything like aviation related. No, nothing particularly. Not like at first sight? No. Nah. Yeah, it's right here, like literally right at this corner. The app uh, directed us directly to the, a point um, right in front of the front door of the trailer. This is exactly it. 
So it's like right in front of the door. You ran in that spot? Yep. Yep. Spirit. Ooh, Spirit Airlines. All right. Did he just yawn? Maybe he's a little jet lagged. And one more for good measure. Sure are a lot of planes around here. It's, it's a 4.27 power. I'm very excited about this. Okay. And then go to map and we'll start the trip again. Oh, it's only four, four minutes. minutes away. Okay. Mm, actually, I think we do have to go back that way. Oh, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> if you can go that way, then it's showing you. Continue on Commerce Boulevard for oh, one mile. So now I can go Just straight? embrace that. I think I should, absolutely. Embrace the loop. Okay. Oh, that was it, I think. No. no. How did we go straight? That's weird. Okay. Okay, maybe there's something we need to see on this. Whew. Loop. Butterfly belly. Oh, it did that all just to turn me back around. I got it now. Hmm, weird. Oh. Oh, what is that? Is that a black cat? Yes. You gotta be kidding me. Turn right on Florida 50 West. Oh my god, it is a black cat! Going into a junkyard! <laughs> okay, it's getting weird now. Uh, now I have bee belly. It's different than butterflies in that butterfly belly you're excited, bees you're nervous. Uh, yeah, San Colonial. Okay. We were driving uh, to the next point, the second point. That black cat also would not have been cross crossing our path mm -hmm. had we not done that loop. Which is nope. Super weird. Where love is, look. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And we saw the what is love or where is love billboard. Um, I mean, hello, talk about a sign. Turn left onto Herman Avenue. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. So I think I In just- 600 feet, okay. your destination will be on the right. This is like the back of the airport? Is that what that is? We're not going your destination to... is on the right. Weird. I think it's the executive airport, right? So the next place is the executive airport. A uh, little the private planes go in and out of there. Uh, but the point actually is beyond the fence. So I can't get to uh, where I feel like I need to go, or at least where this point's directing me. So I kind of just have to look at it from afar. But I'm not going to violate any federal laws today. Yesterday, we had um, a man named Deepak on, and his intention was aviation. Okay. And the person who did the randonaut experience before I did, uh, his intention was aviation. And so it's just a little bit interesting, more than a little bit interesting, that that's my second stop. Doing an aviation intention, and now that brought me here. Did he go to, did it take him to an airport? No. It didn't, interesting. So I wonder, you know, what that means as far as the universe, like are our, our, our paths supposed to cross at some point? I, I don't know, but um, my journey seems to have been a part of his, which I think is kind of cool. And just a few feet from the point. Ew, it stinks over here. Is yet another creek. Ew. There's a creek there also. That one definitely stunk. It's kind of another crappy creek. Yeah, this one seems, whoa, that's like a dark tunnel I don't want to go down for sure. I hope that's the last of the dirty creeks uh, on this adventure, but I guess we'll find out when we go to the next stop. We'll have to wait on that because we've got to get back to Auburn, who's generating her second point. All right, our next spot. Head south on Carvale Drive toward Bongart Road. What are the chances we pull on the same street that, is that a purple house? This house has all of these purple ornaments in front of it. We're 10 minutes away still. Like, we really shouldn't be stopping here, but it's pretty good. 
purple, every, everything, all these purple little trinkets and such. And not only that, but there are white rabbits on the front porch. Uh, more white rabbits, huh? Then I notice around the corner, there is a gate that is very purple and says, welcome, 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 welcome. And I'm like, I have to go in here. You guys, we have to go into this backyard. So we got to go into the backyard, which is amazing, and we look around and it is like the most magical place. It was enchanted and everything was based in purple. At first glance, it looks like everything's in disarray, but then when you go close, you start to see like everything's meticulously organized and there's so much detail and it's like a very passionate project to this person. This is kind of blowing my mind right now. And I feel really weird, honestly. Like I feel very much in like, another place in time. I couldn't even like comprehend that we had just came from white rabbit and then the next set of white rabbits and now we're in this like enchanted backyard. It was like a fairy tale. Speaking of fairy tales, the camera spots something. Ninja turtle, we just talked about ninja turtles. When we first got going on our trip, we said, and we're off like a herd of turtles. And we're off like a herd of turtles. Turtles are slow. Well, we're gonna get turtles now because we're talking about it. We should probably just focus on purple. And then one of the producers says, Oh, yeah, Donatello is the purple turtle. So maybe we'll see a purple turtle. Donatello? They use the purple oh. ninja turtle. Okay. We found a ninja turtle in the wild with purple in someone's backyard, like totally organically. Like we just were like brought to it. It's insane. This is my type of random not trip. Wow. Like, this is getting kind of weird, don't you think, Auburn? Um, I feel like pretty surreal right now. Like, just, I don't know. I'm a little zenny or something. Feels like I'm in a different dimension, in a way. That was insane, you guys. I mean, do you see, though, like, how the universe is writing this story? Like, we couldn't have found that using a satellite and going through like individual yards. That's insane. I could have never in a million years have expected that we would have got something like that. You and me both. All right, from the mega believer to our resident skeptic, let's check in with Deepak who's considering the effect of intent and consciousness as he approaches his third point. I'm a skeptic by nature. So it's very difficult for me to find significance in randomness. It would take a lot for me, because like, I don't think anyone defi could define it, right? It's an undefined thing. To me, there's, there's things you can see that cause and effect, and if you can establish that, then you know, I'm with you. But if you can't, if it's just, ooh, what yeah. if, then I'm not really, it doesn't, doesn't help change anything or do anything. And the current thinking, I'm pretty sure in the scientific communities or in the medical communities that it's, uh, you know, it's not a real thing. Yeah, it's the mind. Yeah. Oh, take a right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> There's one of those turns. <laughs> not bad. We made it, guys. There we go. It's literally this tree over here. The third place we went to uh, is a house in a cul-de-sac. This is at the end of the cul-de-sac. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Someone's gonna talk very nicely to you, probably. Yep. Oh, there's someone there. They're in the window? Um, I think right over here. We met this guy who was really, really nice. Hey, how you doing? How you doing Deepak. 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 Uh, somebody help me. Deepak. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Tupac if you want. Whatever works, yeah. Oh, now what, what is this about again? So it just, it just takes us to weird spots, like randomly in a little circle. The spot that the app told us to go to was right in front by a tree um, in the front yard. By your sidewalk. Yeah, yeah like I right with a the... tree out there. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, I took the... How long ago? Uh, it's been about three weeks. I got it and had the stump man come in and grind the stump out. Wow. Oh, crazy. Hope I didn't turn out enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> why'd, you cut it, why'd you cut it down? It was getting old and like me, rotten. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was ready to go. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Good, good. Cool. That's my house, too. Oh. Yeah, yeah this is where I live. Yeah, my, my father-in-law lives there. He's kind of... 
wonderful guy, but he's Mother Nature's kicking his ass. Mm -hmm. Aww. No. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. And he was telling us about his father-in-law who had dementia. And that reminded me of my own grandmother who just recently got diagnosed with dementia last year. And she didn't have too many people taking care of her. So um, I stopped by to help um, for a little while. So yeah, it reminded me of how difficult that whole experience is and how much we don't really think about it in daily life. Because we're so insulated from the struggle. It's a weird coincidence. I'm a good, good man. Always was. I just hate it. You guys do what you want. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Be careful. Oh, and you. have a good time. Okay, folks? Thank you so much. Yeah. You. Take care. Good luck. Appreciate it. That's where the actual point is? No, that point is like right at this corner, I think. Yeah. It's like right at this point. Yeah, I'm pretty much on the spot like right now, I think. Okay. Like right in front of hmm. here. Um, I don't find significance and randomness very easily. So it, I think it's a challenge for me to uh, see something significant. I mean, I know planes are everywhere, but this is getting ridiculous. On to Alexis and her third point. Hopefully, it's not a creek. In 600 feet, turn right onto East Colonial Drive. I think down that way is like the way that I would take to get to a guy's house who um, I dated for a little bit. Are you attracted to that man on the billboard up there? Is that your type? I do think that guy's very cute. Really? Like, yeah. you've seen him before and thought that? He used to work out at the same gym I did. Do <laughs> you know that guy? I don't know him, know him. Like, Have I've seen him around? I've seen him, like, when I used to work out at the Y. I think he was maybe in, like, one spin class with me. But, yeah, it's a cute face, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Your destination is on the right. Oh, okay. This is the second no trespassing place. Uh, so our final stop is, I actually don't know how to describe it, uh, an empty lot, I guess. You've arrived. Again, blocked off by a fence and no trespassing. So again, not going to go all the way to where the point technically is. Yeah, super weird uh, that we're at two no trespassing places, according to the Florida Department of Transportation. I still can't get to that uh, that wide open space because that fence is there. Um, and so there must be some barriers in my life that, that are preventing me from, from reaching my goal, and which is, you know, to find my person. So the point actually is like in there. Okay. And so the thing that I just figured out from like one, two, and three is all of my points were someplace I couldn't get to. So like through the forest, it was on the other side of the airport, uh, that fence, and now over there. So maybe those barriers are self-imposed, maybe it's the, the universe's forces at work for now. It's definitely something you know that, uh, that I need to think about and reflect on a little bit more as to why those fences might be there. But I think it's significant that uh, in each stop, I've seen um, some type of barrier, whether it's a water or a man-made barrier or one that someone else put there. I, I think, I guess I have to maybe figure out how to remove those barriers. I mean, it's just shocking to me that there's trash at every spot. <laughs> but, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Like, the more things I see, it's like boom, 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 boom. They're all, like, hitting me at once. But, yeah, I think it's kind of, I haven't found it yet, but I'm still on the journey. Is that it? I think that might be it, actually. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to get to. I think it'll be worth it in the end, but I think I'm on the journey and maybe that's right where I'm supposed to be right now. I like that. That's a good way to look at that, Alexis. The last time we saw Auburn, she was still reeling from discovering the Purple Secret Garden. What's next? I don't know how we're gonna top that, guys, but I think we're going to. And we're off. Continue on Florida 426 West for one mile. I feel pretty weird. I'm getting a little heightened, like my energy feels really heightened. 
I feel like I'm just really focusing on purple right now. I have no, I have no idea, like, what's, I'm so excited. I don't know what's gonna come next. <gasps> Is that a cemetery? Oh, my word. <gasps> we're headed to our next point, which crazy ends up being in a cemetery. So we're pulling into the cemetery and I'm kind of getting like this eerie feeling. Then turn right. It's gonna bring me to that cross. Is that where it's taking me? But it's literally centered with, it's like right here. You've arrived. Okay, so I went to church on Sunday and I feel like all these crosses are making me feel weird. <laughs> okay. okay. I used to jog here. I thought it looked the same. We've got the camera guys trained to look for planes now, apparently, but still kind of weird, right? Like right as I'm walking? Right overhead. Maybe another crossover coincidence from Deepak's intention. Just like one lonely little purple flower. It's weird. See, I have to go, I'm gonna have to go up those stairs and go I gotta go this way. I have this sense that I'm like supposed to be looking for something else right now. Okay. But I don't know what, let's just get to the point and see what we find. I'm really close. It might be those purple flowers over there, actually, like all by themselves. There's just this one bouquet of purple flowers and they're like the purplest flowers that we've seen on the whole trip. I feel very, like, very weird right now. This is crazy. Salts. And uh, I look down at the ground and the headstone says salts. And I was speechless. I haven't been to church in like six years and I went to church three days ago. And the message was on Matthew chapter five. I had just heard the message at church, which was salt and earth. And here I am and I'm looking at the ground and it's salt in earth. And it was a very surreal, unbelievable, I don't know. It was crazy. And then this is salt. And I was like just thinking about it. Like when we pulled in, that couldn't have been more than three minutes ago. And I was just thinking about it there at that cross. Got a guy coming over. Oh, hi. Hi. We're, are we not allowed to be out here with cameras? No, okay, no. totally understandable. Guess you're not supposed to shoot any footage at graveyards. Makes sense, I guess. Since we're looking for somewhere to go, Auburn and our team decided to look for purple in the cemetery's neighborhood, where one producer used to live. Is it even worth walking over to it? I say, if, you, if you're getting that vibe too, we should do it. Salt. Did you look up that verse? Yeah. That purple door? Kinda. You all right? Uh-uh. But I feel like I need to go to this place we're going, but it's okay. Stop. Uh -uh. All of a sudden, I start feeling super weird. Like, my ears started ringing, and it felt like, I, I don't know, I felt really charged, like overdone or something. And we're walking, and then before I know it, 
I don't know. I don't really know what happened. I was just walking and then... Here we go. Oh, oh! I fainted. And it was really scary, actually. But I think if a rando not faints on a trip, that's normally a good stopping point. Uh, Although it's hard for me because I'm a hardcore random knot, so I feel like I could have kept going. And the producers were like, look, she fell on purple flowers. So like, I think they could have kept going too, but I felt good about it. Like we had found enough purple stuff and I honestly needed like water and food and to like clear my mind for a second after like that crazy ending. I just have to like think for a second. I feel like super out of it right now. All right, so she's okay. Adrenaline. Dopamine, dehydration? We aren't quite sure what happened, but all randonauts should know to be ready for anything. Some trips aren't for the faint of heart. If you're ever feeling woozy or weird, just play it safe and sit down. So let's recap. Three very different randonauts, three very different journeys, and three very different experiences. We had Deepak searching for aviation and attracting seemingly all of Orlando's air traffic. Alexis was looking for answers to her love life, but kept finding trash and running into barriers. Oh, and she ended up at an airport? Auburn just wanted to find some purple. She stumbled into an enchanting secret garden and ended up face first in purple flowers. But that wasn't all. There were also white rabbits and black cats, baseball players and Bible verses, ninja turtles, and friendly folks along the way. Did these journeys prove anything? What do you think? Will you try it? I would absolutely random out again. It was really fun. So today's random out experience was a bit plain. Get it? I've been on a ton of random knot journeys and this one was probably like top three. I just, I don't know what would happen the next time I would do it, you know? And, and what if I, was trying to manifest something else, and what if something else is my intention? What would those places look like? Seeing the three journeys bleed together has been just incredibly mind-blowing. I'm officially a randonaut. I'm now officially a randonaut. I am definitely a randonaut.